the lifespan of all living things is limited. Living things produce other organisms like themselves and thus ensure the continuity of their species. This process is called reproduction. It is a natural process due to which the species continues to exist even if individual plants or animals of that type die. There are two important modes of reproduction. A. Asexual reproduction B. Sexual reproduction The male-female distinction can be seen in many species of living things. A new individual of a species is created through the union of their gametes. Such reproduction is called sexual reproduction. Reproduction without the union of gametes is called asexual reproduction. Let us see how reproduction in plants takes place. Plants like the grapevine, sugarcane, rose are produced from their vegetative parts. This is called asexual reproduction. However, fruits and seeds are produced in flowering plants. This is sexual reproduction in plants. Let us first learn about asexual reproduction in plants. It takes place through different means. Vegetative reproduction. Reproduction from parts of the plant such as the root, stem or leaf is called vegetative reproduction. This is a natural method. The new plant that grows by this method is exactly like the parent plant. When branches of plants like the rose, hibiscus are planted in the ground, they take root and a new plant grows from them. Vegetative reproduction from the root and stem. When we bury a potato, sweet potato, onion, turmeric in the ground, a new plant begins to grow from them. Potato, turmeric, onion or chrysanthemums are underground stems. Sweet potato is a root. They carry out the function of vegetative reproduction. Vegetative reproduction from leaves. Buds grow on the margins of the bryophyllum leaf. They take root when the leaf falls on the ground and a new plant grows from them. Students, nowadays artificial methods like grafting is used to grow a desired plant. A branch of the plant one wants to grow is inserted into the cut made on the stalk, the stem or stump of another plant and tied there firmly. The branch to be grown is called scion. If the scion gets a good supply of water with the required salts dissolved in it from the stalk, a new plant with the desired qualities can be obtained. For example, mango, chiku. Plants like bacteria, fungi, algae do not have parts like the root, stem, leaf and flower. These plants reproduce by means of cell division, budding and sporogenesis. Let us learn about cell division as a means of asexual reproduction in plants. Unicellular living things reproduce by cell division. When the cell has grown, the nucleus in the cell divides and forms two nuclei. After that, the protoplasm also divides and two independent cells are formed. The new cell also divides in the same way it was grown. This kind of reproduction is seen in bacteria, algae and chlorella. Another means of reproduction is budding. This kind of reproduction is seen in living things like yeast. In this, the original cell gets a little swelling. Soon, a part of its nucleus enters the swelling and a bud is formed. The bud grows and in time becomes a cell. This original cell is called the parent cell. 
the nucleus of the parent cell divides to form two nuclei. One nucleus and some protoplasm enters the swelling or bud. Later, this bud separates from the parent cell. It becomes an independent organism. Such reproduction from buds is called budding. Let us see how reproduction through spores, that is, sporogenesis, takes place. Reproduction from spores is called sporogenesis. You must have seen the fungus that grows on bread or pickles. Spores begin to grow when they find favorable conditions, that is, when they get enough moisture, warmth and oxygen. From each spore, a new plant is grown. Another means of asexual reproduction is through segmentation. In algae like Spirogyra, small pieces or segments are formed due to decomposition or some other reason. From every segment, an independent plant grows. Now, let us move further to sexual reproduction in plants. In flowering plants, flowers are the organ of reproduction. The andresium and gynesium in the flower are important for reproduction. The andresium is the male part and gynesium is the female part. Pollen grains are produced in anther lobes. When the pollen grains from the andresium fall on the stigma of the gynesium, they begin to grow there. This is called pollination. Male gametes are formed in pollen tubes grown from pollen grain. They unite with the female gamete in the ovary. This union is called fertilization. A single cell called the zygote is produced from fertilization. This leads to the formation of the seed and fruit. The seed takes root in the ground and a new plant grows. Sexual and asexual reproduction is seen in animals as in plants. Let us study about sexual reproduction in animals. The distinction of male and female organisms is seen in animals of higher order. The male has the male gamete while the female has the female gamete. As a result of their union, a zygote is formed in the womb of the female. The division and growth of the zygote leads to the birth of the new individual. Based on how a new organism is born, animals can be divided into two kinds, oviparous and viviparous. Oviparous animals are those which hatch from an egg. Viviparous animals are born from the womb of the mother. The young of snakes, hens and other birds first grow in the egg. After the zygote has been formed as a result of the union of the male and female gametes, a protective shell is formed around it. This is what we call egg. The nutrition required for the zygote is provided inside the egg itself. When the growth of the new organism resulting from the division and growth of the zygote is complete, the organism breaks the egg and an independent individual emerges from it. The zygote of animals like rabbit, rat, cat, man grows in the mother's womb. The womb is in the mother's abdomen. The zygote is nourished through the mother. When its growth is complete, the offspring emerges from the womb. The young one depends upon the mother for its nutrition for some time after its birth. The mother suckles the young one. Now, let us learn about the asexual reproduction in animals. You have already learned how reproduction takes place in plants by cell division and budding. In the similar way, unicellular animals like amoeba 
reproduce by cell division. In animals like Hydra, reproduction takes place by budding. Let us understand the meaning of perpetuation of species. A cat's young one is like the cat itself. A mango tree is grown from a mango seed that takes root in the soil. After a period of time, mangoes will grow on the new tree. When a rose branch is planted in the soil, a rose bush grows from it. It means that a species of animal or plant continues to exist through reproduction. In other words, the species is perpetuated.